Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me today. I thought I would work on a two pound Gulf Coast and Gulf Coast crossbreed um, order from the Woolpool Fibers. Kind of explain to you a little bit more about the difference between um, really good fleeces and Woolpool fleeces and tell you a little bit more about how the fibers act in different ways, whether you're hand spinning or mill processing into yarn. Just a few things that I have learned through the process and the mill that I work at, Spirit Fiber Works, what Nicole has learned through trial and error and all these things. So yeah, well, let's get started. I will be um, processing this order and doing a voiceover for you. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you so much and welcome to all the new subscribers. I will see you next time. So here you can see me removing weak tips from the locks. I am not scouring this. I'm not flicking. I am checking for second cuts and veg matter and removing what I notice and what is easy to remove. Um, but my main focus is to remove the weak tips because those parts will create neps and noils in the finished yarn if they're left in. And if I'm not going to put out my money to buy fiber that is like this um, with all the weak tips, then there's no way I'm going to sell it like this. So I am going through all this effort so that my customer who has ordered two pounds of this less than ideal quality wool um, can have two pounds of usable fiber to start off with even before scouring. She'll probably end up with, well, I don't even know, um, one and three quarter pound maybe. I'm not really sure how much weight she's going to lose in the scouring. Uh, and it'll end up a nice creamy color. There are a few things I wanted to share with you specifically about the fibers that I learned recently. One is that um, sometimes when you take a fleece to the mill and have it processed for yarn, into yarn, um, it can come back really inconsistently spun and be a huge disappointment. Uh, that's really, really true of the Gulf Coast breed and especially the Hoggett fleeces. So my friend Jan of Hope Springs Farm um, sent a hogget fleece to the mill to be processed. It was spun into yarn and it was very inconsistent. Breed, not breed, fleece, sheep specific yarn. Um, and then she sent off a few different fleeces, had them all mixed together and the yarn came out absolutely gorgeous and even. So the consensus is that Gulf Coast wool is perfect for blending. It really handles blending beautifully. If you put a little bit of alpaca in it, it is perfectly smooth yarn. It's gorgeous, it's amazing. Mill machines don't automatically adjust how they're spinning for every inch of the fiber as it goes through the machine. Hand spinners do that without even noticing they're doing it. So a lot of these fleeces are better for hand spinners than for mill production or you wanna make sure to separate out the coarser fibers from the finer fibers. When you send it to the mill, have it processed separately. That would probably create a more smooth, gentle, pleasurable yarn. Um, the yarn that Jan got back from the mill that was, it drove the mill owner, Nicole Bonkers. And she's the owner of Spirit Fiber Works. She was very unhappy with it. Um, you're seeing some pictures of that now. I, I think it's beautiful. It looks more hand spun, more organic. And I think it's really, really lovely, more of an artsy sort of stuff. And it's really great to use it. So there's nothing wrong with this. But if you're sending out a fleece to be processed and you're expecting smooth yarn in return and you don't get that, you're going to be incredibly disappointed. The same thing with buying a fleece. If you're expecting your fleece to be really consistent across the board and no bridge wool or you know just same fiber length fiber diameter crimp style and you're not getting that you're going to be disappointed so 
my job today is to inform you of the characteristics of each fleece of the Gulf Coast breed in general. And they can have a huge variety of fiber types within one fleece. One flock to another, there's going to be a huge amount of variation. One sheep to another, um, even one sheep one year to another, the fleeces are going to be different. You're not going to get the same fleece from the same sheep two years in a row. It's not going to happen. Um, and the Gulf Coast sheep can have up to, I think I counted, five different fiber types in one fleece, although that's not um, true of all the fleeces. It can happen. So when I'm listing fleeces in the shop to sell the Gulf Coast or Gulf Coast cross breeds, I try to showcase a variety of textures from that fleece. Um, I like to showcase the fiber length, the variation in length from one uh, section of the fleece to another, crimp style, and even uh, showing some of the less desirable bridge wool. I always skirt out the Kempy parts. Um, I don't guarantee that I didn't miss some because I'm human and I do miss things, but I try to remove the more Kempy parts. If I'm not gonna spin it, um, then why would I leave it in the fleece for you to spin? And the same idea here with the fibers I'm processing now. I'm getting it to a point to where I am willing to work with it. So whoever was buying it from me will be willing to work with it. Um, honesty is the name of the game here, and I want you to be fully informed before you purchase a fleece from me. If you have any questions about a fleece or you want more detailed pictures, feel free to message me on the shop and ask, and I will be more than happy to provide you with the information you require. Also, I hope today's video was informative and helpful, and if I left out any information and you feel like there's gaps, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and ask your questions. I have recorded this voiceover about 20 times and I'm to the point where I don't even remember what I did and did not say. So if I left out important details, I do apologize. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today for watching me do this very boring job. It is taking forever to break the tips off of two pounds of wool. And sometimes I get the scissors out because they're stubborn and uh, I just trim them off. Um, <laughs> yeah, not fun. Anyway, I, um, I'm really enjoying working with this wool and getting to know the breed better. And I hope you guys are as well. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye guys.